Thank you for tuning into Literary Blend, a publishing podcast. I'm your host, Demi Michelle Schwartz. There's no perfect recipe for chasing a dream in the publishing industry, but I hope the conversations on this show give you the ingredients you need to bake yours into reality. So let's flip the page and get into this chapter of Literary Blend. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Literary Blend. Today's chapter is called The Benefits of Having Author Friends, and joining me on the show for chats surrounding this topic is, surprise, one of my author friends. Please welcome Sarah J. Cotter. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Hi, Demi. Hi. (laughs) How are you? I'm really good. How are you? I'm fantastic, and I'm so excited to finally chat with you on the show. We've been Twitter pals for a while. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'm also really happy to talk to you now. It's really exciting. Yes, absolutely. So before we dive into this chapter of Literary Blend, all about the benefits of having author friends, I would love for you to share a little about yourself and your journey as an author so far. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I have been (laughs) writing ever since I was a teenager, which means that I've been doing it for a good 10 years now, because I'm not a teenager anymore, unfortunately. Um... But yeah, I have been an avid reader, a very huge fan of anything that has to do with books and reading ever since I was a child. And then as I grew a bit more, I decided, oh, I want to start creating it as well. I want to start writing. So that's when I started doing it. And it was only recently, about two years ago, when I decided that everything that I wrote, well, I didn't want to publish that, but I decided that it had been sort of (laughs) preparing me for. Uh, being published so that's when I decided I want to write something with the purpose of getting it you know out there for other people to read as well so I've been writing um, for many years but with with getting published in mind (laughs) with becoming an author in mind uh, for about two years now perfect and we are now agency cousins (laughs) we are agency cousins which is great (laughs) yeah (laughs) Awesome. Literally, like, number one for having author friends, <laughs> when they blow up your Twitter messages, I got an offer of representation. <laughs> it's the most exciting thing that could happen to you because you, you just look at your phone and it's like, oh my God, someone is as excited as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Well, I'm so excited for you and I cannot wait to see what happens next. Absolutely. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So let's dive into our chat for today. There are many, many benefits to having author friends, but Sarah, what is one of the main ones for you for us to chat about first? So for me, as you mentioned, there are a lot of benefits, but I think the most important one is having the support of other people, um, other people who are on the same journey with you, because there are no other people who will really understand what you're going through. Of course, you can have family and you can have friends around you who you share with, But ultimately, they don't completely understand the process of it. Uh, They don't understand how taxing it can be, uh, trying to break into this world, into publishing, especially if if you're seeking traditional publishing. So I think it's the support system that kind of um, you receive once you enter this community that is really important as you start developing yourself in this direction. Absolutely. Yeah. I think support goes many different ways. And, yeah. you know, the biggest thing, like you said, is people who aren't in a creative industry, they don't fully understand. And it's just exactly. the people where you tell someone, oh, I got an agent. And then they ask you two seconds later, oh, when does your book come out? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Or they're, um, they're not really aware of what an agent is because, um, well, I'm not from the United States and the way publishing works here it's very different there are no literary agents uh in this part of the world (laughs) let's say eastern europe uh or many other countries like the concept of a literary agent does not exist so when i shared with some of my friends that i have an agent now i got a lot of uh (laughs) 
confused looks first. They were like, eh, why do you need an agent? Just publish your book. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I wish it was that easy. Your author friends will be there through the successes, mm -hmm. through the hard times. And it's really Absolutely. nice to have somebody and a group of people you can turn to because you're not alone. Whenever you're getting rejections, your friends are getting rejections mm -hmm. too. And when exactly. I was querying, literally, like, I would tell my friends, I don't know if I can keep going. Like, I don't know. And they will give me a kick up the butt. Like, no, keep querying, keep going. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just need a friend who understands it to help you get back on your feet again and help motivate you because it is yeah. really difficult, even though we are all facing these obstacles. Yeah. As I, as I said before, it's very taxing. And I feel like for other writers who are querying in the process of it, they really do go through the same ups and downs, just like you mentioned now. So when they say they understand how you feel, they really do. <laughs> they really do know what you mean. Right. Yeah. And I think, too, when you look at the success side of it, that's extremely inspiring for me because before I got agented, some of my author friends got agents and I was so excited for them. I like was just so freaking excited because number one I love my friends and I want to see them succeed but number two that made me realize it happened to them so it can happen for me too and so I think it's really great to look at other success as an inspiration and try as yeah. much as possible to not see publishing as a competition because there's books for everyone there will always be space for new books new authors and also too like my friends write awesome books and I cannot wait to see them on the shelf. So just think of it that way too. Like you have friends who are writing incredible books that will one day get into the world for other readers to read as well. And so I think just the support aspect to celebrating other authors, no matter what step of the journey they're on is really great. It's really important. And as you mentioned, there are so many brilliant books that are, you know, being written by people around us, by those writing friends that we make along the way. It's not just about waiting to see the book. It's sometimes um, as you make those friends uh, during your querying journey, you also, uh, if you're lucky enough, maybe, maybe you befriend those writers, you become critique partners, you start better reading each other's books, which is also very invaluable, I think, as a resource for um, feedback. Whether you take it or not, that's that's up to you. But <laughs> yeah. personally, I have found that um, getting getting comments or general outlooks on my book from other writers who already have experience, you know, writing and have experience querying and have an idea of what mm, the market is uh, like right now, because they may have gotten personalized rejections from other agents or they may have received. Uh, revision suggestions from agents that's really feedback that they have and once they give you feedback on your book I think it's sort of like a domino effect you you learn as you go and you learn together yes I love that learning together that's such a beautiful way of putting it because I completely agree with that I think that the coolest thing is reading unpublished manuscripts like they're fantastic and it's so great to get the opportunity to read friends books and also like you said get the feedback too because even though we're both agents and now we're still getting that feedback that will never stop so having author friends in your corner that you can say hey I got this idea for a new book I wrote the first three chapters can you give me a vibe check do you think you like this what do you think of it and it's really great to just have people you can turn to because you can always go to like professional editors and things like that but I think it's really great when you have author friends because sending out your work to people can be a little daunting if you haven't really done it before <laughs> and so when you have friends in the industry that you've gotten to know and that you trust I think it's a lot easier to send your work out to them because you know the person and you know that they'll give you feedback but they'll yeah. also be kind about it because there are horror stories of authors getting just feedback that's so mean that it wrecks their motivation mm -hmm. and their <laughs> self you know confidence and things like that and yes. when you have friends that yeah. you can trust they will definitely give you constructive criticism but also in a very mm -hmm. kind way Yes, and I think it's really important here to distinguish because uh, in a lot of uh, on a lot of uh, social media uh, platforms, you have the writing community, but you also have reader communities. And I think it's really great when readers reach out and want to like check out your manuscript. When you get a reader to read it, 
you get a lot of feedback, but it's more of a reaction. Whereas when you get a writer to read it, you get more suggestions. You get, of course, you get reactions, hopefully. Yeah. But you also get your manuscript. um, (laughs) 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 It was absolutely great. But aside from reactions, you also get the constructive criticism. You you get real suggestions. You're well, (laughs) real suggestions, real uh, suggestions about the development of your novel. As you begin writing and editing, you sort of learn more about how to develop a novel, how to do the pacing, how to um, express certain things, how to uh, shorten paragraphs, what is necessary, what is unnecessary. And I think having a second pair of eyes on your manuscript, another writer who's already done that, who's already aware that uh, you know, an info dump is not always necessary or something similar to that. They can be like, oh, hey, you know, this entire paragraph, you don't need it because we already know that. Yeah. Yeah, no, a lot of great points. And I love what you brought up, too, about the distinction between having a, another writer reading your work and another reader reading your work, because we are both readers and writers, you know, yes, so we yeah. can take the approach of, the reader perspective with the reaction comments and the theories and all of that that's really fun and that's the thing too like when I get feedback I love seeing the reactions plus the suggestions because if it was all suggestions it'd be really overwhelming so I like how yeah. like people leave reactions and positive notes too because it shows that you are doing something right and there's like an engagement level there but I think it's mm-hmm. really great because when a reader just a reader's reading it their perspective is going to be extremely subjective. Like they're just reading it as a reader, their own personal preference, what's connecting, what's not. Yeah. Which is good to know because if that's your target audience, it's good to know if something's working or something's not. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it from the writer perspective, I know for me, whenever I'm reading books, I may have my own personal opinions for things, but I always try as hard as possible to take a more objective approach and say, okay, I see the author's vision. I see what they're trying to do and just take a more objective approach like maybe this chapter is too long split it maybe your inciting incident comes too late so we know the terminology we understand the craft and so whenever we're giving feedback it's a lot more direct in terms of the writing itself and the prose itself versus just a reader who is just reading it for enjoyment or like to tell you if they like it they didn't like it that kind of thing yeah because I think a reader uh they they receive your manuscript and they read it as if it's the the end product of the manuscript whereas the writer knows uh, that there will be probably 10 more edits of the whole manuscript probably another revision probably five more edits afterwards so they know that it's it's still a work in progress yeah absolutely that's a really great point and the other thing too I wanted to bring up with kind of similar in this area that we're talking about right now is that Mm -hmm. aside from getting feedback on your work you can also ask your author friends industry related questions like if you're going to query somebody and you're not quite sure if you get an offer from someone and you haven't really done a deep dive Mm -hmm. on them yet or if you're just interested in how a certain part of the process works if you have friends Mm -hmm. in the industry that have gone through those different stages and have made connections of their own and have their own networks you can definitely ask for advice and things like that and it's really really helpful I can't tell you how many people I've turned to to ask like hey have you heard about this person or what do you think about this approach that kind of thing there are so many different things we can ask our author friends to get opinions that's exactly the same thing that happened with us when I asked you (laughs) about (laughs) the agency that we're now in yeah you're absolutely right because there is a learning curve and as you begin you don't really have that much knowledge. And when you connect with authors, some other writers who have been on this journey for a bit longer than you, then they probably know what's going on. They know what is considered normal or what's considered um, suspicious or <laughs> Shady. Uh, sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> so you can always take what others say with a grain of salt, but it's, um, you know, chances are that those writers who have been doing this a bit longer Uh, they probably know how it goes and they can teach you because for example when I first started querying I (laughs) I didn't really fully realize how tedious and difficult it was going to be I kind of just um, (laughs) dove right into it (laughs) without (laughs) doing much research which I now realize was such a horrible mistake 
because then I joined the writing community and I was more active on Twitter and I was reading what other writers were saying, querying writers. And I found out so much about different resources, um, such as, uh, you know, manuscript wish list, because up until that point, for example, I had a few agents that I, I had put down in an Excel sheet and I had only checked out their agency websites, which is, you know, it's also okay. But then I realized, oh my God, there is a query tracker, there's query manager, there's publisher marketplace, there's manuscript wish list, and so many more other um, ways to find out more about that agent that you're about to query. And that is something that I did not know in the beginning. That's something that I learned with time. <laughs> yeah, no, same as me. As soon as I graduated with my MFA, I like jumped right into querying, which was a massive mistake, not only from like lack of research, but also I was not ready to query. Like I should have done another revision. My query letter wasn't good. My synopsis was a hot mess. Like, and that's the other thing too, with having author friends, not only with reading manuscripts, but I can't tell you how many times, like when I was querying, I had my friends look over my query letter or I read query letters for them. You can definitely get into that kind of material as well. If you're still in the querying process to get people to look mm-hmm. at your query letter get people to read your synopsis and look over your agent yeah. list if you're not sure if there's any red flags on there you want to avoid that kind of thing absolutely because there are also a lot of writers who are uh younger i've noticed in the bios of authors on social media i am assuming not everyone can afford to for example hire an editor to look over those query materials and in this case i think it's also a huge benefit to have others uh, in your circle who are doing the same thing because then you can exchange those materials and you can you can tell your friend you can be like hey you know i love your book because i've read your book but the essence of the book i don't see it in the query letter which is a pity because you know, it's it's this exchange of resources and uh, constructive criticism and, and advice. And it's so invaluable. It's so important to have it, especially in the beginning as you learn. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with the point you made about someone pointing out your query letter lacking the essence of your book. Because, yeah, I actually just read a manuscript and I loved it. And then the author was like, can you look at my query letter? I was like, yeah, sure. And I did. And I was mm-hmm. like, there was this one part of the book that I thought was like the coolest most unique thing that completely set her book apart and it was not in the queer I'm like girl you got to get that in the letter you got to put it in the letter <laughs> yeah so it's really great too when you have yeah. friends who read the book and then looked at the query and see like because they understand it kind of from the same perspective you do but because they're mm-hmm. not in your head and they don't know it as well as you do they can kind of pick mm-hmm. out what they think is the most important parts that should be in the query letter yeah. because I don't know exactly. about you when I was writing my query letter I was like the whole thing's important how am I supposed to write this <laughs> How am I supposed to put it into, you know, two paragraphs? <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. And the other thing too is that I think it's really great to have author friends from various not only various stages of the journey, but also in different genres because it's really awesome to read outside your genre, not only to widen your understanding and appreciation for other kinds of books, but also pulling things that you learn into your writing. Because because I just read a an amazing book that was contemporary, but it had a very strong romance plot to it. And I personally don't write romance, but I love to put romantic subplots in my stories. But I was like, man, like, she really nailed the romance in this. And so when you read outside your genre, and you read your friend's work outside your genre, you can pick up on things that maybe, maybe you're not that great at sensory language, but your friend is like the best at sensory details, (laughs) then you can learn things from them as well. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really inspiring in that in that sense to what you just mentioned, reading other genres, because, uh, you know, there are fantasy books, there are romance books, but I think just as you mentioned, there are usually subplots, whether it's, uh, you know, action or romance or, or thriller or something, it doesn't matter. It's, I think it's really important to, to, to go across genres. And I think you are able to give others a perspective from a fresh angle uh because because of the difference in your genres yeah no really really great point when I was in my MFA program I was in a critique group once where 
it was me and two other girls and they both wrote fantasy and at the time I was writing my thriller and because I was writing a thriller and that was like my main genre when I first started writing I'm like very into like fast pacing and suspense and tension and like reading their books I'm like your world building is lovely but your pacing is super slow and there's no tension here and so even if it's a genre that's not yours there are elements that can definitely be applied to any genre and I think that's why if you have someone reading your book that's like that's their specialty kind of craft element then you can definitely get advice to help you weave that into your manuscript to make it stronger absolutely yeah I agree (laughs) perfect well so one of the last things I wanted to touch on about having author friends is that you mentioned about joining the writing community seeing things on Twitter that kind of thing and what I will Mm -hmm. say is that the writing community on Twitter is great, but it's also a hellscape at times because there's a lot of drama. And I found that <laughs> it's true. super important to stay out of the discourse, to not wreck your own reputation. But at the same time, mm-hmm. keeping things bottled up if you're feeling frustrated about things isn't healthy either. So having author friends that you can vent to privately about stuff is extremely therapeutic. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Uh, I think once you enter, you know, this world of querying or trying to publish, whether it's traditionally or uh, indie, it doesn't matter because, you know, you will always find other people who are doing this. And that's what I meant earlier when I said, you know, when you when you meet other writer friends, I, I wasn't talking particularly about traditional publishing. I was also talking about uh, independent publishing. But my point is when you when you enter those communities, whether it's on Twitter or um, Instagram, Discord, uh, I'm really not aware <laughs> where else you can join a writing community. Maybe TikTok, I suppose. Yeah, TikTok, yeah. Um, I think in the beginning, a lot of people are very passionate about sharing their work or sharing their views or speaking their mind about, um, you know, published books uh, <laughs> Uh, or saying they didn't like something in particular. You know, I'm all in for speaking your mind, but in the end, you also have to learn. And again, which is where other writers come into play, other writers that you meet and talk to and befriend. In the end, it's also a business, and you have to be very careful what you say in a business, because it's not just with publishing. You can't go and meet a you know a, a client and, <laughs> and yeah. offend them and then expect something to work well. It's just not going to work that way. Yeah. And I think that's something that you also learn as you go. Even if you wrote the most fantastic book, there may not always be a market for it. Uh, It's a business. Again, it might not sell. You shouldn't take it to heart. And that's why you have your writer friends, you know, more experienced authors uh, there around you or why you should have (laughs) more authors and writers around you. So you learn that. Uh, or as you mentioned just now a lot of drama happening on Twitter again it's really important to have someone to vent to when you're unhappy but you also have them to tell you like hey don't get involved with this because Mm -hmm. um, it might affect you in some way in the future Yeah. yeah yeah just keep it off the timeline do it in text do it in direct messages and just let off the steam you need to let off because at the end of the day, like mm-hmm. we love writing. It's a business, but we love writing. And so oh, yeah. whenever things in the business are getting under our skin, if we don't let off the steam in some way, we will be miserable and that is not mm-hmm. fun. And so having those no. other friends who get it, like I've vented to my parents about stuff before and like they've responded, but they don't fully understand. I'm like, no, like you don't understand. This is a situation. Like this is what's going on. But they don't fully understand. <laughs> yeah. So like talking to somebody privately who you trust who you know won't go posting screenshots <laughs> on the timeline. Like, you know, yeah. like it's really, really great to let off the steam to just get it out of your system and return to of what you course, have to because do. I think that kind of circles back to the first point that we made having a support system because yeah. it's not just about drama or being unhappy with something but it's it's a lot of pressure to uh to take on <laughs> or yeah. like to handle by yourself because you get you get rejections they're inevitable in this in this industry you get rejections and it starts wearing you down and you start feeling depressed and if you're alone I feel like it's it's going to be impossible to uh, 
to keep, keep yourself motivated. Yeah. yeah, to keep going. So having others around you to to share those things with, to share those concerns or, you know, also the exciting moments. It doesn't have to be all bad. It also like, uh, you know, full requests or partial requests or a really positive note on your manuscript. It's also really exciting to have someone to share that happiness with. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. So the last point I want to chat about is where to find all the friends. So people may be listening like, yes, it sounds great, but where do I find friends? <laughs> so where are some places that you found all the friends? There's no way around it. It's really awkward. You just got to push through it. You just got to <laughs> reach out. And chances are the person on the other side is just as desperately looking for all their friends as you are. Yeah. So there are a lot of places to find all the friends for me personally, mm-hmm. like social media is a big one. Um, oh, yeah. And also I've made friends through attending online workshops and conferences. And I've also obviously have friends from when I was in school. So there are a lot of places. And you're exactly right that everybody like not everyone I feel like a lot of authors are introverts I personally am um yeah and I think (laughs) sometimes it can be like oh I don't want to be awkward I don't want to reach out but you're exactly right guarantee you the person on the other side is dying to have author friends too and just being the one to take the leap like I can tell you like there were so many times when Twitter pitch events were still a thing where I would see a pitch and be like, oh my, oh god, my yeah. god, that book looks so good. I want to beta read that. And then I would just message the author, yeah. like, I just saw your tweet and I love your story. Would you mind like swapping the first few chapters? And like, I know you exactly. and I, we started by swapping the first three chapters and got yeah, obsessed with yeah, each yeah. other's stories. And then now we talk like all the time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. what you just mentioned, Twitter pitch events, I think, uh, I think that's where I met most of the people that I actively uh talk to now and it's exactly the way you described it i had uh people respond to my uh mood board or my pitch and they said oh my god this sounds great and then i had someone uh, send me a message uh, suggesting that we swap uh, chapters and i was like oh my god people actually do that (laughs) because um, (laughs) if you mentioned the other things for example school or conferences what i can say about this is that um For writers who are not in the United States, of course, there are uh, less opportunities, let's say, to do those things in person or even online because of the time differences. So for me personally, it's been mostly social media. Yeah, no, that's really great. And Mm -hmm. that's the beauty of social media. There are so many downsides to it, but at the end of the day, it's a really great tool to network and not only yes. with authors yeah. but make connections with agents and editors too because you never know what's going to happen down the road and so remaining professional always but not being afraid to make connections with people and build those relationships because it's really really great there's a massive support system when you have that you have people to turn to to ask questions you have people to swap manuscripts with having author friends is the best and sarah is the best it was <laughs> awesome having you on the show Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah absolutely and now this brings us to the plot twist for the show so the plot twist is when I ask you a question that you can never see coming because of course as readers and writers we love plot twists are you ready (laughs) okay okay (laughs) sure so I read your incredible book House of Winter (laughs) and it has a very strong elemental magic system so my question for you is if you could have an elemental power which of the four would you choose (laughs) Oh, okay. So uh, are we talking about House of Winter specifically, the universe there? Yeah, you can do that. Or if you would just think it'd be cool to have earth, wind, water, or fire, or whatever. Okay, okay. Well, because in the House of Winter universe, there's a little bit more (laughs) background to the powers and how they get them. Uh, But if I had to personally choose, I would choose fire. And I am absolutely not biased right now. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think fire. Fire, I would choose fire. I think fire is really powerful. And I think people should sometimes be like it. You know, it gives you light. It makes uh, it makes you warm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think if you, well, <laughs> let's not focus on the bad things, but fire can be warm, it can be bright, and it can give you, yeah, yeah. sense of warmth. <laughs> that sounds <Awesome>. stupid. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that. So yeah, fire magic. Perfect. Well, Sarah, it was lovely fire. having you on this show. Can you share with everybody <laughs> where they can connect with you online if they would like to yeah. chat with you? For writing, you can find me on Twitter. My handle is SJ under underline Kader. Um, feel free to just uh, shoot me a message to connect with me. I am always happy to help if I can. Yeah, fabulous. Well, thank you so much again for joining me. Thank you so much, Demi. Absolutely. And that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this chapter of Literary Blend with Sarah, all about the benefits of having author friends. If you enjoyed our conversation, please consider leaving Literary Blend a review and giving it five stars to help others just like you discover it. Also, if you have friends in the publishing industry you feel would be interested in the show, please pass it along to them. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading and writing.